All right, rounding out our stories and our author for this week is Flannery O'Connor and her short story, A Good Man is Hard to Find. Um, Flannery O'Connor and William Faulkner are often talked about together um, at the same time because they are both these kind of southern gothic writers and she was very much influenced by his style and um, her writing and she really kind of if if you had to think if, if you had to if you asked a person on the street um, who the most prolific um, southern gothic writer um, was who embodied um, the Southern Gothic style the most, it would absolutely be Flannery O'Connor in her various, um, she was more of a short story writer than a novelist, although she did write a couple of novels, um, but her short stories really embody everything that there is to do um, with the Southern Gothic genre. Um, she was born in 1925 in Georgia. Um, she was raised in a devoutly Catholic home and I say that um, because in her stories especially for our stories uh, for our story this week there are those tensions between um, good and evil moral and immoral and um, those kind of tensions between um, religion which which we'll talk about um, she's considered to be a regionalist writer so if you look back to when we talk about local color and how um, local color writers um, were a thing in the 19th century. She would be considered a local color um, author of, of her day because of her use of dialect and capturing um, a specific region of, of the United States. Um, she did not live a very long life um, because she died um, at the age of 39 after being diagnosed with lupus. Um, her writing style um, is, a, is is similar to um, William Faulkner without the stream of consciousness. And um, she really, like I said, this she looks at these local color, these dialects of particular people. Um, her writing is, she mixes in a way that Faulkner kind of does, but she does it more overtly. Um, there is a, a level of dark humor to her or comic relief to um, her writing strong characterization um, and I, I, I hope you guys pay attention to that um, when we look at some of our characters um, this week um, and then there is that blending of the comic and the tragic um, together because of her shocking plots um, that hearken to the gothic and grotesque um, And I think some of you will be kind of shocked at where this story takes us um, because her readership um, and, and most readers who read her for the first time are absolutely horrified um, by, I guess, the blatant violence, um, but also intrigued by this, this the mysterious subtext of, of her work. Um, but her writing really focuses and centers on Southern identity and religious hypocrisy. Um, her direct writing style um, looks at confrontational descriptions and events um, that accompany the, the Gothic. Um, her short stories, like I said, have a mixture of light and almost comical prose and graphic violence that are especially disorienting. Um, I think that the, the discomfort, I, I think that we are meant to be discomforted by um, her works because it pushes the boundaries of, of what we are supposed to feel. Um, and I, I think she wants us to kind of um, this kind of, of, of ex, the exposition or um, the exposure of harsh realities and contradictions um, that we see in, in her work, um, the violence, the chaos. Um, characters have these, these revelations of where they fall short and it, 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 it 
begs the question um, of her readership that when we have a society that's fraught with, you know, racial, religious um, kind of tensions, these tensions, um, she wants us to stop and think where we fall short as, as individuals. So um, that is most commonly noted in her novel, not her novel, her short story, A Good Man is Hard to Find. And that is a very misleading um, title because I guess in some ways, Miss uh, Emily from A Rose for Emily it would also say the same thing. Uh, a good man is hard to find for, for various reasons, but not in the same context that uh, Flannery O'Connor means it in, in this um, story. Um, I guess the one thing that I do want to mention by way of background is that um, this story is going to take us on a journey, a road trip, and um, it is a road trip with a family of three children, two parents, and a very cantankerous old grandma. And the family road trip is popular. I mean, uh, O'Connor really kind of 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 uh, takes again what she sees around her, um, and puts it into writing. Um, in that the 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 family road trip really gets popularized during the 1950s, um, and part of that has to do with the development of interstates and. Um, car ownership. Um, more people have the family car and they want to take their children places. Um, also, uh, this story takes place in the South, so we are in the Bible Belt. And you'll notice, uh, especially with my, my little road sign right here, um, it is a road sign from the 1950s, um, that these road signs kind of televise or telegraph these evangelical messages and it's you'll see what I mean when you get to meet um, our character the misfit um, and, and what Flannery O'Connor is is getting at with that um, pay attention when we read this to this idea of doubles or mirror images where we have um, not necessarily a, a mirror image of the exterior but of the interior or the the, the blending of of these kind of doubles because um, in, in our in our novel or not our novel our, our short story for this week the misfit and grand and the grandmother are doubles for one another and I don't want to spoil it for those of you who haven't read it because uh, it's going to be very interesting. Um, but they are doubles for each other and they, they play off of each other. And the grandmother sees in the misfit, I think, more of who she is than she would like to admit. So um, this idea of doubles. I also want you guys to be on the lookout for foreshadowing, uh, characterization. What kind of characters are these? Um, and this... This, this dialogue, um, the conversations that um, not only the grandmother and the misfit have, but the grandmother has with um, her, her children and her grandchildren. And look at the dialogue of the children, because I think that the, that the things that the, the way the children behave are just, is just as kind of, of, of unsettling as um, the, I mean, we've got, this this story is full of 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 of, of the things that that nightmares are made of. So um, there's also I think too that um, particular attention to um, the tensions between the past and the present um, as well. So and this idea of hypocrisy is pretty strong. So. Um, I am so excited to see what you guys think of this story as well and what you guys come up with by way of, of looking at how these stories both um, talk to each other um, or differ from each other and what the individual authors um, are trying to say um, thematically in some way about the human condition um, and the... Uh, uh, yeah, the human condition. So um, let me know what you guys uh, think. And I can't wait to talk to you guys uh, later on this week.